Good morning. Today I'm going to show you how to use another part of your template that you bought from Buttons for Bonnie on Etsy. If you have not bought a template and you've just come upon this video, I encourage you to visit our website which is listed in the area below and you can purchase this template and many others that you can use for a wide variety of uses. So in this video, um, this is actually the second part of the video that goes with the video on curvature of letters. We're going to actually cover filling in this center space with the player's name. Now from the previous video, I'll cover this again. Um, font installation is not covered in this video, that's a different video. Opening the files, that's a different video. Um, if you'll look in the um, if you'll either click on our channel or look over to the right side, there should be on your screen the option to choose these other videos. I would highly recommend watching them first um, as they will give you the basic instructions on how to prepare the file and prepare your computer to work with Design Space and the fonts and the template. If you've done that, then let's go. So, we've already put in our top and our bottom number okay put in our top name and our bottom number we're gonna work on just putting the players name inside of this volleyball players ball now cry cut design space does not allow you to import a template that has a point and click text box which is why when you insert the template and you start why won't it let me you see you click on that name and you're so frustrated because why can't I type in my name what's wrong it's broken no it's not broken not broken whatsoever. In fact, I'm going to show you how to use it and give you the greatest degree of flexibility. Because they will not allow you to import a point and click text box um, from any type of an outside source, what we do is we use my writing as a guideline and you're going to create your own text box and put it into this area where the writing would be. And what this allows you to do, this gives you a greater de degree of flexibility than you would have with a point and click text box. And it also allows you um, to beef up your design space skills. Yeah, and you're gonna be pulling out some super awesome stuff once you learn this. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna go over here to this left-sided column. I'm ready to insert my first player's name. The text, the box to type in my text opens up. And let's see, we're going to call my first player Sally. Okay, I'm going to turn on my caps lock because I see that that is all capitals. Now, Sally, okay, I just did the top on a different video, and so you see Sally's not in the right font. It's on the top font. Well, I don't want Sally to look like the team name. I want it to be in the correct font. So, when you downloaded your files, um, you should have downloaded uh, two folders and you should have already unzipped them. One's going to say font and instructions. Inside of that is going to be a Microsoft Word document that says it's going to say volleyball players ball or whatever the name is that you purchase. Font list. That's the key point. Font list. You're going to want to open the font list which I already have opened here and I had minimized. And you're going to scroll down and see I'm working on the player's name. What font should I be using? And it says Riffic. Okay? So, I'm going to minimize that for easy access. I'm going to go back to this box, this text box here that I'm working with. There we go. I'm going to go to my top toolbar and I'm going to click the button for choosing my fonts. Now, I don't want collegiate. I'm in system fonts because I know these are installed on my computer. You could use all but systems quicker. So, I'm going to exit that out and I'm going to start typing in R I F F. There we go. So I've got Riffic, um, Free Medium, Riffic Medium. They're going to be the same thing. I'm going to click on Riffic and ta da! And you can obviously see, I thought I turned my caps lock on. No, I had turned it off. So I'm going to double click in here. I'm going to go back, turn my caps lock on, and retype in Sally so that everything is nice and lined up and the correct size. Now, I'm going to pull Sally down here, and you can obviously see the spacing on Sally is gappier than the spacing in the template. Sally's not the right size either, okay? Um, so we're going to work on fixing the size and getting it to fit inside of this area, okay? So I see how this name is. I see that it, it almost completely fills the space between the two parts of the volleyball, and I see that I do not want to go out. Basically, I want to stay within that, these outer lines of the volleyball, okay? So what I'm going to do in order to use and move Sally in that area, you can put this here and go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, but I can't really see Sally at all. So 
the first thing that I'm going to do with Sally's text box, um, I want to get the dimensions. This is the easy way. You can do the point and pull method, but I'm going to I'm going to show you. Uh, I'll show you both ways. First of all, if you'll go to your layers panel and you scroll down, okay. I'm going to minimize so I can see these different groups. I'm going to. You want to see the actual file group that you're working with. This group up here was for my. I'm going to show you by clicking the eyeball. It's for my team name. Okay. Don't want that one. And so this is the volleyball player's ball. I'm going to go down and I see where it says name. And I can. I know that it's the name because I can click, click the eyeball and it turns off. I want to click name and I want you to turn that eyeball off so that I can move within this area. Okay. So with Sally. Okay. Sally right now does not look like the name you look. So first and foremost, I'm going to use on the right hand side, you see two arrows. This allows you to pull Sally. And while you're pulling Sally, you keep the same exact dimensions, right? Now, we already have a problem. Sally's too long and it's gappy and it's not tall enough. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull until I get the letters almost exactly the right height. Okay, so that looks good. That's about the right height that I want. Okay, I don't want it to go into the volleyball. I want a little bit of space so that I can see that differentiation. Now, if you want, if you want to make this easier, you can actually also turn off these two outer bands so they're not in your way as such with the eyeball. There we go. That's easier. So I want to be able now, I need to move each letter by themselves and I need to be able to get these letters closer. So first of all, I will click on my text box and I'll go up here to uh, on the top to where it says letter spacing. Let's decrease this number and you will see that it's going to pull these letters in. Now for some names, this is all you'll need to do. It'll pull them in nice and tight. But if you're dealing with a Y, Y is a weird letter because in nature we are normal. We are used to looking at things that go from large on the bottom to small at the top. Okay. So what do we look for alignment with? We look for alignment on the bottom of the letters, not the top of the letters. You're going to look at the bottom to see if they're all lined up. Well, obviously, you do the same thing to see about the spacing. But the Y looks totally different, even though it's the same spacing, because the largest part of the Y is at the top and not at the bottom. It looks gappy and ugly to the eye. So, that's why we chose a word with a Y. I'm going to show you how to take care of this and even use it with some of those difficult letters. So, we spaced it. But this spacing is still not like really how I want it, and this could be cleaned up some too. So, what I'm going to do is you, we're going to need to take this text box, and if you go up here to the top on this toolbar, it says advanced, you need to press advanced and you need to ungroup to letters. And that's going to give you the ability to move each individual letter. If you click on it, you see you're going to move it all together. Now, before I get started, I want to click on the S, and I want to go up to this top toolbox and you see the position here I have the X and Y okay so what I want to do is I want to write down on a separate piece of paper because if you have kids a dog a telephone you're not gonna remember these numbers unless you're really super brilliant and if so hey contact me because I would really like to know um, your tricks <laughs> but I'm gonna have to write these down so for my X and what this does, this is a position that it is in on the screen. So the X is going to be the up and down position as such. And the Y is going to tell you um, left to right where you're positioned on the screen. We're mostly concerned about the Y, but I'm going to write down the X just in case. So I've got 4.903, but the big one's that Y. And I'm going to star my Y on my paper so I know that's my big one, and it's going to be 6.722. And what that means, I want to make sure at the end that all of these letters have the same Y value. And that lets me know they're all in a straight line. I'm not going to print it out and the L is going to be slightly a little higher than the A. No. If your Y values are the same, they're all going to be in a straight line. So, that means I can move all of these letters. <coughs> Excuse me. I can move these letters and not worry about keeping the bottoms of them the same because I have my starting out dimensions of where the line is going to be. So let's start with the S. Um, obviously, to have the letters tall enough, I'm going to have to make them a little bit skinnier so they fit inside the perimeter of this ball. Right now, if I move this, ooh, it only allows me, every time I move it, it's locked. 
so that it stays in proportion okay it won't let me squash it or stretch it okay it's gonna stay completely proportionate well I want to squash and stretch it so right here where you see this lock box I'm going to click it so that it shows that it is unlocked and then this tool the two arrows change to a four arrow meaning that instead of just uh, doing a two-dimensional change you can change this completely Ooh, flip it you can do any of these things okay obviously the S is backwards now. Let's fix this. There we go. So now that I can move this X with free S with freedom, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to work on making it skinnier. Okay, and this is just a process of trial and error. Okay, so let's go back here. There's my S. Okay, that looks skinny enough, but let's see if I can't make it. There we go. That's skinnier and you're gonna work your way through this okay so you'll probably go back let's go do the same to the A let's unlock it and let's work on making it skinnier okay and different letters they have different spaces that they fill so um, let's go to this L oh let's see L and if you're really anal retentive um, you can uh, pick the skinniest letter if you want all letters to be the same like width and you can get that number and use that number now with this Y I'm gonna unlock it too and kind of squash it because I want everything to stay inside my parameter okay as such so let's go a little bit I like that it's it's a little bit out on here and a little bit out over here but the human eye will tell you Usually you have about a 10%, a, a 10-15% um, variation where your, your eye automatically just thinks inside of the circle or thinks inside of the image. It puts images together. And um, that's one of the great things about the, the way the, the eyes and the mind work. So you don't have to have perfection. We're seeking for optimal things that are wonderful and nice, but not perfection. That makes you pull your hair out and get really early wrinkles, and nobody wants that. Kids already give you enough of those. <laughs> Okay, so we'll go to the S, and I like where I'm positioned. It's not too bad in or out. And here's my A, my L, L, and my Y. Now, the spacing here, once again, I told you about the Y. You can always move the letter by the Y closer um, because the I is going to be looking at the bottom for your spacing. Um, but I don't like that either. I want it to go back. I like the original spacing. So it is a smaller gap. It's a slightly different gap, but I think for this purpose, this is going to be how I want it to look. Now, if you look down here at this bottom line, let's zoom in. You'll see two things. One, the S and the A are not on the same plane. They're not on the same line. They're not lined up, and they're not the same height. Both of those things we're going to fix, okay? I've got them roughly in the spot where I want them. Now, because of that, I need to make sure... I'm going to use this L for the height, okay? It's still locked. You could unlock it and change its height to this one's also locked, but we're going to use the L height for Sally's name. So I'm going to click on one of the L's, go to the top portion up here where it says size, and it gives me my width and my height. I'm going to write down on a piece of paper my height, and it is 1.831. And I'm going to go to my S. I'm going to click my S, and I see my S's height is not 1.831. So I'm going to change the height to 1.831 and because it's unlocked it's not going to change the width it's just going to change the height of the letter so that it's the same height as the L which we're using as our base letter for the height. I'm going to do the same for the A. Nope, not the right height either. It needs to be 1.831 and no I didn't press enter. 1.831 enter. There we go. We know both L's are the same because they're locked, and the Y also needs to, oh needs to be changed too. So we need to change the Y 1.831, and the Y is now changed. But still, they need to be put on the same line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let's take this center L and let's line it. Well, it can come. Let's see. You know, I like to get it as close as I can. Um, that looks roughly the same, the same amount of space on top and bottom. So I'm going to see this L. And um, previously we wrote down the Y. I like the previous Y too, though. Um, our previous, oh, we're actually almost at the same number. How cool. Our previous Y we wrote down was 6.722. We're only 
very slightly off at 6.723. So you could use either or. So we're going to let's use 6.723. Okay. And I need to make sure that every letter's Y is 6.723 to put them in the same line. So let's click on the second L. Nope. Let's change this. 6.723. Enter. Let's go to the Y. Oh, it's way off. 6.723. Let's go to the A. 6.723. Um, let's go to the S. And type, oh, yeah, got to fix that too. 6.723. Okay, great. So I look here and I see all of my letters are in a line. Their, their width, I've made them as skinny as I want each of them to be. And they all fit basically within the parameters. The eye pulls them into where it looks like um, they're a complete part of the volleyball. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to link these letters back together because while you're working with other parts of the volleyball, it's really easy just to accidentally pull a letter and everything goes haywire. Or you get a phone call or the kid comes and grabs the mouse from you um, because they want milk. So this is the easiest thing to do. So we're going to take and we're going to highlight across these letters using our cursor. No. Okay. If you're working with the template, it's going to pull the template. Instead, we're going to click once on the letter, the first letter, hold down your shift button on your keyboard, and while holding the shift button, click your other letters. As such, because we're on top of the template, we have to do it this way. They're all highlighted. Let go of your shift button, and over here on your right sided layers panel, press group, and they're all grouped back together. And so at this point, because I already have the team name, I've typed in her name and I already have her number. I can go back over here on this panel. I need to turn back on the two sidebars as such. And you see here now, they are all together in my template. Yay! Now, for printing purposes, in order to keep this in the same dimension, I want to, whenever I go to print it on Design Space, I want to fully highlight it. And I want to go over to my right side of the layers panel and I want to group these together. That way whenever they print, they will print in the same, um, they'll print in relation to each other and you won't have crazy pieces here and there. Okay. So at this point, I have my own template that I fixed and it is ready to print or cut and use for whatever purpose I need to use it for. Thank you so much for joining us and I will see you soon for more fun with one of our templates. Thanks. Bye-bye.